What's up, everybody? We just finished up the Soy Loca interview. Skills pay bills. It's going to be out on Wednesday. You got to check it out. And remember, we got to listen in and we got to blow up this album. Let's show BZ San Diego love. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, it's me Claudia with Skills Pay Bills and I got one of my really good friends here. Um, he's awesome, he does a lot of really cool things, but uh, a lot of the times he comes into the studio we have like these really cool conversations. Um, but I want you guys to get to know him because he's such a cool guy and if you guys already heard about him, if you went to the Legends Ever Die show, you probably saw him perform. So we have here in the studio, uh, BZ. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. glad to be here. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I want to say something before we, uh, before you give your intro. Cause, okay, okay. Um, so yesterday your mom was here, yeah. and um, we were kind of like chit-chatting and stuff like that, and uh, we always circle back to you, right? Yeah. And, um, and she was like, I'm so proud of him, you know? And I was like... And it made me feel like really good, you know, to like hear like a parent basically be like, I'm proud of like my son. I'm proud of like my daughter. I'm proud of like, you know, like any little person that you like see from like, you know, when they're really small to like when they get like, yeah. you know, as mm -hmm. an adult or when they're doing their thing. Right. So she's like, I'm really proud of him. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, he is the type of person where we have to support that type of creative because um, it's difficult, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. it's difficult to get into the music industry. It's difficult to like start a brand. It's difficult to run a business. It's difficult mm -hmm. for all those kind of things and you're doing it. And that inspiration isn't just where it's like, where we're friends. Mm -hmm. It's like that inspiration where it's like other people see it and they're like, wow, um, I could also do it, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, how do you continue to support someone that is an inspiration to so many people that they might have been told, you can't do that stuff. <laughs> like, how could yeah. you do that, you know? And so I just thought it was like really special that she was just talking about how she was really proud of you. Yeah, you know? I love my and parents, you know? They're the re big reason why I'm here. Yeah. I mean, there's no way around it, you know? Yeah. So thank you again yeah. for spending the time with yeah. her. She loved it. It was yeah. great. No, and it was awesome. And I was like, and like I said, I'm like, how? And that's a constant, like, question, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, if there is these people that are, that are motivating us, inspiring us, and doing all those kind of things, how do we keep their vision alive? Because their vision is also our vision, right? Where mm -hmm. we could see ourselves in these places. And if we can't see ourselves, where it's like, like a brown person doing this thing, it's like, how could there, how, how can we keep that going? So mm -hmm. it's like, that's a constant thing that I've been kind of thinking about like this whole entire week. It's like, how do we keep supporting the creatives or the people that are, are inspiring us? Cause it's like, it's not guaranteed. It's like, there's that constant hustle. <laughs> yes, never you know, ending. That constant hustle, and it's like, and then you're kind of like, you know, I don't know if you've ever felt like you're like, there's a lot of work and not enough reward, you oh, know, yes. and so, uh, and so how, knowing those kind of things, it's like, how, as like a community, can we continue to support people that are going to inspire us? You know, and it's the, and, the and small things, yeah. small things like you're doing. Yeah, it's the I got some good advice uh, the other day and it was talking about, you know, what I'm saying looking at the fine details yeah. and it's the little things that are going to be able to all help us to grow together. You know, That's like true. having me on a podcast, having yeah. these conversations with us, hitting the collab on a post, like things like yeah. that are the little things that are helping us all to grow together. You know? So true. And that's so what true. a lot of people overlook. That's true. <laughs> the hey, fine so details. Before we, because I, I always like to <laughs> tell people like yeah. who my friends are and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, it's always better when you do your own intro. Because yeah. then it's like, you could actually touch on all the things that you do as opposed to me just basically being like, he's just a cool guy. <laughs> You're I like, mean, I do more than that. That's <laughs> one of the things that got me here. Just yeah. being a cool guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, BZ Beats. I'm a DJ producer um, out of the Inland Empire. Nice. Yeah, I recently moved here about five months ago. Wow. Um, from a small city called Colton, California. Wow. It's between uh, 
Riverside and San Bernardino. Wow. Off the 10 freeway, yeah. So born and raised there. My family was born and raised there and all that. Um, I grew up there. And then, um, yeah, I was just like everybody else, every other Mexican. I had friends and gangs and all these different things. And, um, yeah, my path was just different along the line. Um, I had key people in my life that nice. pushed me in the right direction. But also, I feel like they were like my guardian angels. Yeah. Because they kept me away from all the bad stuff kept me away from the gangs i mean we were i was still around it yeah but there was just it just never let me in like i had a, a friend rest in peace my my best friend raymond and he passed away when i was uh young as well um at like 21 Whoa. Um, but throughout my whole life and my childhood i was around all these you know the gang members the killers the people that robbed all these things right yeah. their older brother stuff like that and um he always just kept me away from it it was my i was just had a love of music really young that's and good. he was just like yeah that's not you like the gangs are not you you're stick to your music and he yeah. was always so stern on that even that's though we were awesome. so different and throughout my my childhood and going into my teens and stuff like that when i started dabbling more um it just it's kept the same thing no bz's not like that he's his music his music yeah. and i never understood it why but it was meant for the bigger picture, you know? That's awesome. Um, so then as time went on, I started getting into bands and stuff like that and just started growing. Um, I started playing guitar and Whoa. I had, um, you know, key people in my life to just show me the little sparks, yeah. the little things like, oh, hey, here's how you play guitar a little bit. Here's the basics. Yeah. Oh, hey, here's this and that. And I just had key people in my life to kind of point me in those directions. That's and it awesome. just kept happening over time. Um, and then as I got older, about when I started getting in like later high school and stuff like that, um, I started playing with the bands, things like that. So I had a band and then I had another band and it, it so was cool. going great. It was going great. I was the bass player. I thought it was, I thought everything was going to happen. The future was set. I was like, all right, I'm going to be a rockero. This is it. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. it. And uh, yeah, unfortunately things, fortunately think good, all the good things come to an end. Um, and there was a time where it's just that the, didn't work out with the band. Five people, getting any five people together at one time regularly is very, very difficult. Yes. Uh, so for me, it was like, okay, what's the next step? The band's not going to work out, but what is the next step for this? Like, I'm not, I know it's not done. Another key influential person in my life that pointed me in the direction of the music production, he said, hey, I'll never forget the day. Oh, BZ, you don't have to do it with the band. You could just do it yourself. And I was like, myself? What do you mean? Yeah, like, here's the software. Boom, 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 you know, again, giving me those little tools that I needed. Yeah. And uh, it just opened up this this big old spectrum for me of, wow, like what's possible that I could do on my own, yeah. you know? And uh, I kept just starting to create. I just That's started awesome. like my journey of then. Um, and I was like, man, this is really what I want to do. Like, I really want to do this. There's, n there's no way around it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, just, I kept doing it. And then uh, as time went on, um, I started like, you know, putting stuff out, little, little beat stuff, oh, stuff like yeah. that. And then that's when I kind of w got into a, another space where I met another person, right? And they started showing me how to DJ. So it was like, it was like a domino effect of me just running into the right situations for people to give me the tools yeah. to get to where I needed to be. And I was always all ears open and always like, okay, what can I learn? What, what's next? Learn. Yeah. You know, and uh, that, that was a big thing coming up because a lot of people weren't like that they were stuck and i seen that and i was like okay i'm not gonna be like that i want to just be open and learn yeah. everything yeah i'm a producer but i want to learn how to dj i want to learn how to do this i want to learn how to do that i love and that yeah i just just started learning um and when i got to the point where i was i remember i was playing uh these beat showcases right and I was doing the most. I was going out there with my guitar, with my bass, like every, my MPC. That's so cool. I was doing this whole extravagant thing. And then he told me at the end of the first show or the second show, he was like, yo, you know, you don't have to do all that. <laughs> you could just come and bring your flash drive and just DJ your set. And I was like, DJ it. And I, I had dabbled in DJ and like I had records growing up and stuff and all that. But it was never like, oh, DJ now. It was ne that was never really in yeah. my mind. And um, yeah, shout out to my boy McGutter because he was the one that put that in my head. And uh, he was just like, yeah, you could DJ, bro. And I remember the next one, put it on my flash drive, rolled up. And I felt empty because I didn't have my guitar. I didn't have nothing, like none of my tools, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went up there and I DJed it and it went great. And I was like, what? And then he's like, dude, you're kind of good. <laughs> He was like, like, I don't know. You're just kind of good. You yeah, got, yeah, you yeah. kind of got it. Yeah, yeah. And then that just like, oh, wow, light bulb, ding. And I was like, 
I have to do this. That's awesome. So that started my journey of, okay, I know now exactly what I want to do. So I have my music, right? But now I need the way to showcase that, to put it in front of the people in the world for them to see it. Um, and in different lights, too, because, you know, doing live performances and beat showcases, it's only a certain crowd you could do that to. Yes. But when you're DJing, there's DJs everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At every event, at everything. So for me, it was like, okay, this is a bigger chance for me to get to more people. Yes. Um, and little did I know that that journey was going to just take me super far. Wow. Um, so f from there, I was like, okay, I learned DJ for about a few years. I got a... a opportunity to do a DJ residency in downtown Riverside nice. and I ran the nightclub I was getting all this opportunity but it was because I was eager and I wanted to learn and I wanted to grow and I wanted to build with everybody and give people opportunity mm -hmm. and uh yeah I started doing that and it was like growing like fast that's awesome but I was doing it about like I ended up doing it like five days a week I was like really really Whoa. deep into it and then I started running the whole place and it was great and in the middle of that though I was like okay I'm good right now, but how could I be great? Like, what what do I have to do to be great? Because all my friends are good, but they're here too. So how can I be great? Yeah. And uh, that's when I remember I had, um, I was doing this uh, little podcast radio. I was DJing, because like, I was doing a lot of different things with one of my buddies. And, uh, like, someone had came on and they mentioned something about DJ Scratch Academy. And, again, another light bulb. Ding. Okay. What's DJ Scratch Academy? What? You mean there's a school for DJing? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, I, I was searching for more knowledge and more things. And my teachers and stuff at the time that I was working with, they, they only knew a certain amount. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for more knowledge. And that's when I researched that school. And boom, shortly after that, I went up there and I was like, no, this is it. If I got to travel long and far to go find it and to get that knowledge, I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I, and that was the start of my next journey, you know. So I went to DJ school for a few years. Shout out to DJ Scratch Academy in L.A. Yeah. Um, and I did that. I learned from some of the best DJs in the world. DJ Revolution, Mr. Chalk, the Beat Junkies, um, DJ Hoppa. All these amazing dudes that I've got. I got to soak up the talent and really see what it was, what it really was. That's so awesome. Took every class there. It was great. I loved it. I yeah. was like, okay, what's next? So after I finished that, I was like, great. So now we're in the clubs. I've been DJing. I've been doing it. And the whole time, my residency is still going. And I'm yeah. just continuing to book art, book people, bigger name DJs, and, and network and connect and bring that L.A. to the Inland Empire. That's what yeah. I was doing. I was like just circulating and giving everybody opportunity because yeah. I had the outlet. I had, you know, I was putting money in people's pockets yeah. and just sharing the wealth. Yeah. And uh I got to that point where I finished that and it was great, but yeah. I was like, okay, so what's next? Like what's next yeah. in the path? Yeah. And they were like, well, I mean, you could go do this or that, but there was no, really no option. And then someone had sparked up this, this, this other school. They said, well, there's also trade schools, like different schools you can go to for beat making and music production and stuff like that. And I was like, wait, what? I can go again to another school. Yeah. So I kept researching and uh, I found this school beat lab Academy right in LA so it was it's ran by a person named Yuda Benatar you this guy is like a guru they call him Ableton guru because the Ableton is the program that I learned on at the time and uh he was just like amazing his call to fame is the power glove so he made a power glove the Nintendo power glove yeah. into a MIDI controller that you could make beats off of Whoa. He is like an innovator, right? And he has all these controllers that he made. They're like arcade controllers, but MIDI fighters. Like you could use them to make beats and stuff. That's cool. He's like out of control. You, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. Super yeah. cool. Um, but going to that school was like, I was still trying to figure out my sound as well. So throughout this time, like I was doing remixes and stuff. And I, I didn't know my sound, what it was going to be and how to pinpoint it. Yeah. Still trying to figure it out. Um, and I remember I went to that school and it was just like, oh, Okay. This is great. This is the next step. All right, cool. So yeah. now we're songwriting, structure, timing, all these different things, uh, editing, vocals, all this, mixing, mastering, everything across the board. And I really got to learn in depth with them. But it was cool because it wasn't a DJ school. So I was like one of the few DJs there. But at the same time, like I went there to learn. So that yeah. wasn't even my thing. Like yeah, I was yeah, yeah. just a student in there and I was open and wow that just opened up the doors for so much more um and i remember by pinpointing the day where it happened yeah. and we had an exercise where they're like yeah make a, 
uh, headphone time, they used to call it. 15 minutes, make a beat real quick. Okay, all right, cool. I made a beat and I was like, wait. I like something clicked in my head of like the style. Like I remember it was like a little pump beat or something that I made. I was like, wait, why was that so easy for me to make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it was yeah. just easy. Yeah. Like I had been doing all these remixes, all these other things that were just like not me, it felt like. Yeah. It wasn't me. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm like, wow, this is it. And he's like, yeah, that's very good. He's like, keep doing that. So that was where it started, where I really, like, pinpointed, okay, I'm going to make this certain style. I'm going to make new stuff. I'm going to make stuff with new drums, stuff in 2024. And I'm going to continue to push the future. That was that's the goal. That's so awesome. And, uh, yeah, it clicked with me then. And I was like, wow. I was like, this is, like, this is it. <laughs> I, and I went back and I was like, all right, it's time to get to work now. Yeah. And that's what I did for those next few years was just me in the studio working full time and then DJing at night, my residency. And I just kept building and kept building. Opened up the studio in downtown Riverside. Um, I had a studio right above where I was working. So I, I was set over there. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. set. Everything was good. I was doing great. At that time is when, like, I, a few years after the school, that's when I started, like, putting my beats out there and working with artists. And then, boom, started Skyrocket. That's when I got my first one that had hit a million plays. Wow. Um, yeah, shout out to my homie YB on that one. That one is now at 20 million plays Whoa. on YouTube it's on 20 million plays so that was one of my biggest records but then it just kept happening I got another one and then I got another million one and it was like wait what is going on here this that is, is amazing. so awesome it was amazing like I was on I, I felt like I was at the top at that point right yeah um and then again the journey wasn't over the journey was not over and obviously this is a fast version of everything yeah 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 um, <laughs> but so you know the, the main the main points yeah 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 <laughs> Cliff notes. <laughs> yes, cliff notes, definitely. Um, so, yeah, so then that was about the time where COVID hit. Wha okay. So once COVID hit, it was like, it was like, wow, this is, uh, is going to change things because now everything's closed. Yeah. Um, and going through all my journey has always been ups and downs, ups yeah. and downs. I did forget a little part, though, about the, the main, like, struggle um, that I always like to mention because – where I came from when I first started, like, the journey of becoming a DJ and all that, I was really overweight. I was about, like, 275 pounds. I was wow. huge, right? And I didn't have the, all the direction, but the, the reason that I went to this other path was because I really dug deep to find myself. Like, I had things that happened in my life that, you know, I saw the future of if I keep going down that path, I'm going to end up like that. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, one day I woke up and there was a tragic thing that happened to one of my cousins and he got in like a car accident or something. And uh, it was could have been me in the car. Somehow it just clicked in my head and I went down that path of, OK, I want to be great. I don't want to just be normal. I want to yeah. be great. So I lost all the way. I got in shape and that was part of the journey. So that helped me to propel to go to school and to really wow. focus um, on my next goals, you know. Um, and also I also like had cut drinking out. So. I hadn't drank. I didn't drink. That's what the key was to all of this, really. I quit drinking. It's been about 12 years for me now. California sober. California sober. <laughs> you know, the hardest thing in the world to yeah. do in California with all these breweries and everything. For real. You know what? It's so interesting because um, I've also been in that situation where, you know, um, when right after I had my daughter, I was like, why am I like, you know, because it's like we would go out and we would have like a drink and this and that. But I felt like when I was drinking, it was... I was self-sabotaging myself because I then would drink too much and then I would end up like waking up the next day and I was like, man, I feel like crap. <laughs> and so I felt like, you know, I'm also there with you. I'm not a drinker. Mm -hmm. um, and so. It's probably it, why we get along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, didn't yeah, even yeah, know that yeah, about each yeah, other. Yeah, I'm like, eh, I'd rather not, you yeah, know. But facts. yeah, and I felt like it was a way of me self-sabotaging myself. 100%. You know? That was, so, my, that was yeah. my major fault in life. But me I noticed too. it early on. And I fixed it. And it's great because that opened up the doors for other things. Like yeah. my dad has now been sober six, seven years. Whoa. Got a whole nother set of life yeah. off of that, you know? And like just things like that, though, that I didn't even know were going to happen, you know? Um, but those all got me to be, you know, and propel me to where I was going to end up. Yeah. Um, so now, now that we know the, the history of yeah, that, yeah, the back, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, back to the COVID, right? Yeah. So COVID hit. And then I got this... Um, 
opportunity through again i was working with all these rappers doing all these things selling beats working yeah. and i had this one rapper he hit me up and he was like yeah so and so loves your song it's usher's producers right yeah and they love your song with me yeah they want to help us and i was like what okay so we're going to the big studio we go and meet them and i was like all right what is this is a whole new world for me the next level of where i had no clue i was even going um and i remember we got there and it was this big old giant studio and i was like wow like this is a whole new world that's so cool um and i got this position to basically um intern with them and work with them and basically be on their team as wow. their assistant and i got paid training another year of paid training in the biggest studios in LA so I got to work with Usher Little John and as well as all their team and all these other big artists and I did that for about nine months whoa we worked on all these big shows all these things and I was again I was with them and they were the main producers and I was in there to learn and to help but I got to see all aspects of it that's so I got cool. to learn the highest level possible and I was like I was like, wow, what, what is happening right now? Yeah. And I just honestly just took it for what is worth. And I said, I'm going to just put everything I have into this because I know this is why. The first day I will never forget when I walked into the studio, they said, oh, hey, BZ, what's up? Good to meet you. Yeah. And I was really hands on. So there's a lot of assistants that when they're like studio assistants or production assistants, you know, yeah. they don't do nothing. They're just standing there. Or they're just waiting for them to say me yeah. was more really hands on. I had a very, very unique position in this. And I was in charge of all these things, but also in charge of helping them directly. So I got to see this process at a higher level in every aspect, from the creating the music to recording the vocals to mixing to mastering. Oh. And I got to really soak it up. Like That's I was, a, such an amazing opportunity. I was given the chance to learn everything. And obviously it was up to me. Yeah, like for nobody sure. Nobody told me to write nothing down. Nobody told me to take notes. Nobody yeah. told me to watch that guy. Nobody. They just brought me in and said be a fly on the wall in this situation but you know me i yeah, was yeah, yeah. i was in there everybody loved me and it was just it's what it was yeah i was able to befriend everybody and really learn from a lot of key people so that was a huge step in my life but i remember when i went in there they were like oh yeah you know pro tools right and i was like oh the homie pro tools <laughs> no the program pro tools oh yeah yeah i got yeah, you yeah yeah you're at home <laughs> yes yeah, so that was the first time that i got introduced to that i'd heard about it right and i was like wait what is this I was like, there's a whole nother side. And in my school, I went to Ableton school and they uh -huh. had said, oh yeah, Ableton, everything, you're good. Yeah. First major session I walked into, you know Pro Tools, right? And I'm like, oh man. God damn it. So I had to go down this rabbit hole again, but this was the next part of my journey to level up and to get that industry quality. Yes. That's, that's where I was headed. And again, it was tough journey. It was a tough journey. There was a lot of things I had to do. And I, I got to the, the end of the road, per se. And it was like I was presented with this um, opportunity. But it, to me, it was essentially a fork in the road uh, because I had been working with these guys and seeing how they really were and yeah. what the industry really was. And a lot of it was not good. I got to see the ugly side of it as well, you know? I got yeah. to see the true colors of a lot of people and different things. And like being the the, the new one, you know, I got, you know, the, the bad stuff, a lot of the bad stuff. So. I, I kind of had to make this decision of, okay, what's next? And I was presented with this fork in the road of, do you want to go to Vegas and go be ushers, this or that, right? Or yeah. do you want to focus on yourself and build and get to the next level and be everything you ever wanted to be? And I would remember the day I'm sitting there in this giant studio in LA, Westlake Studios, Michael Jackson made everything, everything. Yeah. And I'm like, all the opportunity in the world here, but... I know it's not right because everything I went through, I didn't want to help people that weren't right, that didn't have good hearts and that, that weren't like genuine, you yeah. know, it was just wrong. And it, it, um, how do you say it was my, um, everything that I, I was about was being questioned. All my morals yeah. and all that were like, and I, I just wasn't with it. I couldn't go through with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter yeah. all the opportunity in the world that I was about to give, get like everything that they went on to do and everything, the Super Bowl, all these things, um, I said, nah, it's not worth it. I'm, I'm worth more than that. Yeah. I'm worth more than that. And, uh, yeah, after that, I remember that day I packed up the one thing I had there was like a keyboard stand and I packed it up and I'm like, I made my decision. 
I made it. And that was, and again, going after that was probably the toughest part of my life leading up to coming here uh, because I had to go through and watch them continue to succeed without me and do all these things they said they were going to do, but without me. And for me, I didn't understand why at the beginning. Of yeah. what, what, was the, what was the reason, God? Like, why are you doing this? What is it for? Yeah. Until I came here. And then it all came full circle. And again, I had to, those last year of my life was tough because I had to go through that and see that. Um, but for me, it was just another growth experience. Wow. And I really got to focus on everything I learned and perfect it. So where I would have went with them and focused on them and it would have not been me, like I knew that deep down inside that that's not what it was meant to be. I knew there was something bigger like for me. Like I just felt it. I, yeah. And yeah, it gave me the time to go and perfect that. And again, I didn't understand why. I didn't get it. Um, and then finally my, my parents ended up moving here. And then, you know, I was living at my house over in, in Colton and everything was great, but I just, like I said, I, need, I knew it was time for the next step. And then I remember running into to Milo, Por Vida Milo, and we just, yeah, we, we started talking about it. And he was like, I was like, thinking about moving over here, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, bro, I got you. I got you on a space. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. We'll yeah, make yeah, it yeah. work. And that was like, wow, okay. So now I can come up with a plan. Now I have to execute the plan, obviously. And I have to get through this next six months of dealing with myself and growing and just becoming the me that I am yeah. now. And I went through this journey where it was a dark places, a lot of dark places. And it was, it was weird because it was me by myself and I was in my childhood home. So it was like a lot of just these things that were just like, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, got really deep at points too. Whoa, and I'm self reflection sure. because I was in that place of my birth and just everything around me. But then being in LA and working and coming back, to my roots and having to start all over in a sense was very humbling, but as well as like, it helped me to grow and to see that there was more, you know? Yeah. Um, and I made it through. I'm very <laughs> glad that you did. I and we all knew that. that you were gonna. <laughs> it was tough. It was That's tough. such an interesting um, like place to be like physically in like your childhood home mm -hmm. as you're going and questioning like these things that are happening right because it's like we've all been through like really hard times where you're like why is this happening and <laughs> like and especially like in your childhood home where it's like as a little you know as a kid you're like oh i remember i fell there or i remember like you know one of my friends came and we did this there and you know and so it's like you could almost like relive those like childhood traumas but also heal them, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, I feel like, you know, you getting through all those episodes of like, you know, your life, but also like, you know, this huge decision that you were like, I'm not going to let my morals or my integrity, you know, be basically like, you're not just going to throw them out the window and then go and do this thing that you were like, I really want to do it. It was toughest decision. And like I said, for the longest it's not that I regretted the decision. It's just I, I didn't understand why yet. I didn't get it. I didn't know why. Like, why did I have to go through that, God? Like, why? That was like the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. Yeah. And then, again, coming here and really digging deep and trying to just trying to be better and trying yeah. to find that joy and that happiness. Like, then I, I land here. And again, square one again. I have to build a whole studio. I have to invest all my money. I have to do all these things um, to get to this next level, right? Yeah. And man, things just, as soon as I got here, it was like I was meant to be here. Yeah. It was 100% I like was meant to be here. Like a little puzzle just Yep, freaking. it was like, oh, now you made it here. So now let's, let's start to show you why. That's all these so things awesome. Happen. That's so beautiful. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing to just think back and how far I've come because a lot of it was just me d had to dig deep inside. Like my parents couldn't help me. Nobody could help me with that, with what was in me, you know, yeah. what I had to get through. Exactly. Yeah. And now it's like fl flash forwarding. I got to the studio and man, we opened up the beat den and in less than four months, my career has Whoa. skyrocketed yeah, from yeah, what yeah. it was before. I've got to be around the right people, meet an amazing team and got to, you know, have the right the right setting for this, which I was I didn't understand why before, but it was all meant because I was meant to be a leader. 
not a follower. I was not meant to be on their team and their side, like their guy in the yeah. back. It was meant for me to be in the front at the Super Bowl, me to exactly. be at the Grammys, me yeah. to be at all these places, not behind them and on, you know? Second, it wasn't, and I, and I didn't get that back then, but now I totally understand that that's what it's meant for. Yeah. And I've got to build this thing um, with the Beat Dan and the record label and everything we're doing and get these amazing artists involved and these amazing people and bring them in and essentially like we're healing each other. Yeah. Like they're, they're coming in and like, you know, for instance, you, you had, had Johnny on the other day, mm -hmm. shout out to my boy Johnny. And uh, yeah, we brought Johnny in and nobody even knew Johnny was a singer like that. I didn't. All these people know Johnny. And again, we were able to bring this light out of him that he's always had. That's beautiful. It and is again, beautiful. It, it's healing. And the bigger picture is us even healing more people in the world. And I didn't understand it at the time, you know. And now yeah. it, it all opens up to me and I'm seeing this huge picture of, wow, like, why not me? Why can't I be the one to do that? Like, why yeah. can't I be the one to show the world and heal the world? Like, exactly. Why, why can't I be the big picture person? That's why when your mom was talking and she was saying how proud she was, right? And she was even saying that. She couldn't take this image out of her head of like you still being her little boy, <laughs> which I was like, I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I was like, I want to cry. I wish my parents loved me like that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it was really sweet. And she was talking about that. And I was like, wow. And she's like, oh, my God, he's like so hardworking and all those kind of things. And I was like, we all see it, you know. And so it's like it goes back. Right. This everything that you're saying right now, it goes back to like how do we support these people that are genuinely out there where they're like, hey, you see the potential in someone. And you're like, how do we how do we pull those things out of them so they could also see that potential? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, for me, it's like, how do we support this person where it's like they're doing so many cool things and they're not just doing it where it's like it's self-serving. Mm -hmm. It's really where you're like, wow, look how, how, how through music and all that kind of stuff where Johnny, I, I didn't even know he sang. And so then all of a sudden he's singing and I'm like, whoa. And then he has like a different pep in his step and you're just like, whoa. So it's like, how, how can we, especially like in our Brown communities, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like, how do we support you know, these artists that are constantly, um, you know, like, like thinking about other people where it's not just about them and like, how can they, you know, keep inspiring us and keep motivating us to basically be like, whoa, because it's like, we know that like anyone that, you know, you've ever talked to where you're like, I want to be a singer. And then you're like, yeah, the odds are so, <laughs> you know, but it's like, Slim to none, exactly. Then. So then it's like, well, this person's doing it. So it's like, how do you, how do you end up, you know, supporting them? So it's like they can be that representation for us because we need, we need, yep. rep we need brown representation 100%. everywhere, music industry, education, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere we need it. So it's like how that, that's always been like one of the things where it's like, how do we like, you know make sure that you're How do we make sure? that you're st that you that we stay around for a long time because it's important because it's not it's like it's like you're dreaming you know you're like living this dream and most of us you know we're just kind of like still like not even thinking about what we could do right where it's like you shared the 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 quote on your shirt, it says, once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. Mm -hmm. And it's very true. It's very, very true. You have to trust the process, right? But the process is scary. Fair. And the process takes you through, like, these roads where you're like, what? Like, why am I supposed to be here? And it's like, to humble your ass. <laughs> I've been humbled a lot of times. Um, but then it's like, but then you're like, hey, I've been there. It's like, I know things could change. And it's like, and you put in all the work and you change them. You know, you don't just sit back and you're like, oh, man, I don't have all these things because, you know, yeah. my parents didn't give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to get them. Exactly. Exactly. If yeah. One, someone could do it. If someone else could do it, why oh, can't yeah. we do exactly. it? Exactly. That's why what I'm saying. We? There's no yeah. reason we can't. Exactly. That's, that's tough, though, to have that thinking because, you know, as Mexicans and brown people, we get that. Oh, no, you can't. Ex oh, don't even think about that. You're good. And that little dream killer, sometimes all it takes to kill that dream. 
Like, if I didn't have the little things in my life, the people to put in these tools in front of me to get there, or, yeah. hey, you can do that. Because yeah. I had a number of those, no, you can't. Oh, you can yeah, never for do sure. Those. But I'm sure you're exactly like me. Those things is what made me stronger. Exactly. Those things made me grow and, like, you're no. Like, watch me. Exactly. Watch me do it in yeah. real time. And I then, remember my, uh, my dad, he, um, <clears throat> it was like a rainy day, and uh, we had to go to the grocery store. And I was like already like in high school. I think I was like maybe like 15, 16 years old. And he's like, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, and he had never asked me like questions like that. And I was like, I really didn't know what I wanted (laughs) to do, but I knew that I I wanted to be a creative, you know. And so I was like, I want to be an artist. And then he turns around. He's like, no, (laughs) no, not going to happen. No, And, uh, And he's and he just said no. And he didn't give me a reason for it or anything like that. And he just said, no, mm. you know, and my parents, they've always like been like get like a, a, a career, a small career and like, you know, just just get by, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to be comfortable. You know, mm. there's nothing wrong with just basically being like, hey, this is what I want to do and this is it, you know. But for me, like I was like, I feel like. You know, I wasn't, my parents didn't, you know, do this whole struggle of, like, coming to this country yeah. as, like, immigrants for me to be, like, super mediocre. Be you basic. Know? Yeah, yeah. To work so, a nine yeah, to five, you yeah, know? Yeah, I'm like, no. But, um, you know, it, it does motivate me a lot to, you know, where, you know, a parents are like, well, maybe you should do this thing. And it's like, I know where that intention comes from, where it's like, hey, you don't want your kids to struggle. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we see what we create when we, you know, mold our kids mm-hmm. and you know what they're capable of doing, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, keep pushing them into like this awesome direction of like every single day growing, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like, we don't just stop growing once we become adults. No, not at all. You know, or mm-hmm. we still have like these obstacles and these things that we have to go through and it shows a lot of character how we are you know, going about them, mm-hmm. you know, 100%. so yeah, it's very, it's a, uh, it's very refreshing to like hear that like your parents are like super supportive of everything that you're doing and that, you know, everything just lined up so well once you got here. That, that structure though, of having both my parents, like I'm so blessed to just have that because yeah. a lot of people don't and growing up, a lot of people didn't have that and they attracted to us, but I didn't really get it. Why? You know? But it's that structure. And they didn't even know what they were training me to be this whole time. Yeah. And why they were so stern and so adamant about certain things. But it's that structure. And now I have that in my life. And I'm like, wow, this is how I know I'm meant to be a leader. Because I'm meant to help all these other people and structure and give everybody their own space and their own opportunity to do the things for them to be great. Yeah. And like we had talked about before, like all these different aspects to the team. You know? Yeah. I'm just the face. And yeah. that's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's great for me to be able to be in that, that space to be able to do that, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a long time coming. Right. <laughs> Seriously. Long time coming. I know we talked about, um, before, like in, cause I know we talk about a lot of stuff when yeah, you come in. Talk, You're like, damn, this fucking we, bitch talks a lot. <laughs> I, talk <laughs> I know. A lot too, though. It happens. <laughs> but it's like, I know we talked about like being, I'm sure a lot of people are looking at you and they're like, He's an overnight success, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'm sure because it's like all of a sudden it's like we're seeing you everywhere. We're like, PC, PC, and you know, <laughs> you're walking down the street, PC, you know, yeah. and so and so I feel like there is a lot of this idea of like that overnight success. You're just like an overnight success. You're lucky, you know, Definitely and it's not. not that it's like, look at all this time, energy, sacrifice, you know, um, you know, these these things where you felt like you're like, whoa, like, did I make the wrong decision? You know, all these kind of things where it's like, it's been years and years and years of you putting in, like, you know, just networking and meeting people. And then it's like, and now finally cashing in Mm -hmm. those relationships and basically being like, hey, how could you help me in this, you know, track? Or hey, how could you help me in this you know, I need to get to this place. How can, you know, how can we ask people to help, you know? So it's like, I feel like, you know, because a lot of people, they don't see all that work that you put, that had put in, mm-hmm. like in the past. It's like, it just seems like. I think it's so quick. Oh, he just got there. Oh, he just got that. Oh, this or that. Oh, he, 
Oh, he just got to wear that jacket yeah. for So Loco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this has and been trying to diminish all mm-hmm. that hard work that you've put in. And so, you know, it's important for people to, you know, especially like within our work, right, where it's like we're not allowing for people to basically be like to, to not um, narrate that story of like we're overnight successes when we've been doing it for a really long time. Takes you know, time. and like serious, the sacrifice that that you've made, where you're like, I'm not gonna drink anymore. I'm not gonna do these things. I'm not gonna do that. Like how you were so committed to going to school, all those kind of things. And it's like that sacrifice of like you really became a hermit, and you're like, I'm just gonna be in the studio for all this whole entire time. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, and now everything's like starting to pay off. But these are the seeds. These are the fruits that you've planted these seeds years ago and now it's like you're getting to like eat a really yummy nectarine i love right? nectarines it's so, so good. <laughs> it's so good after it, they right? are you're like oh it's, it's so sweet it's from the best soil in the world yeah. it's just so good because you 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 cultivated it you reap what you sow you've put in all this time so it's like i feel like it's so beautiful in that way right where you're just kind of like you've put in all this time and it's like and now you're seeing like all your hard work starting to like align to to pay off and all that and it feels really good because it's like when we work for so long and the recognition and all that it feels really nice that feeds the ego you're like yeah "Yeah, good job good job but it's like what are these other things that were like hey like in if it feels like our heart and like our soul and like truly who we are so i feel like things like that you know it's it's really good for you to you know like be able to see that it was a you're it's not just an overnight success you're not just lucky you know coming on these podcasts and stuff because i've been kind of doing a lot of different things and talking about this yeah where i never talked about this before these were things that were like my darkest secrets almost in a sense because i didn't want no one to know yeah because i was like why why do i want people to know about this this horrible thing i went through but now i understand why because there's other people in my position that aren't going to be able to get out of that. Exactly. And I could be that light to be able exactly. to spark their light. Because my light almost went out. Exactly. But it, I, it, I couldn't let it, though. It's just like always in me, this burning desire in me has just been to create. Yes. And it's like I can never get out of that no matter what. And then as moving here, it was like, okay, great. I'm going to do all these things. And now what, right? Mm-hmm. And then I put this. I worked with all the artists. I put this album out. Keys to the City, Volume One. Yeah. Make sure you guys go ahead and check yeah, that out. Check it out. You know, a bunch of dope artists on it. Yeah. Um, and doing that and doing all these things, I started seeing more of the bigger picture. And after I put that out, I didn't even know why it was. But then I came to being, oh, I know what Keys to the City is. Again, if someone asked me, what is Keys to the City yeah. to you, BZ? What is it? Yeah. I said, wow, that's a great question. But it's definitely not the literal sense of, oh, BZ got the keys. He's this or that. He's the man. Nah. None of that at all. Yeah. The goal is community collab. That's what Keys of the City is. It's for yes. me to open up the doors for everybody else to be able to grow together. Exactly. And be able to us to come together, support each other, for all of us t- to get in that better better place. Yeah. And it's so tough for people to see that because they want to look at this or that or, oh, it's about him or so on and so forth. But it's not, though. It's a bigger picture. It's so true. It's, it's way bigger picture. So I'm blessed right now to be in this space where I could just show other people that it's possible. Yeah. But at the same time, like, open up this door to connect this person to connect this person or for people to see that person that they never saw before. Exactly. Um, and that's what it is. That's yes. what Keys to the City means to me. Um, it's not the whole literal thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've learned this and I've come to see it and I'm, like, really just honing in on that and just being like, you know what? The... The journey is still going and the work is, is bar- barely started because now I got to do all the work on the ground floor That's true. to be able to keep growing this thing so and to true. not let it just fall or just you know disappear like all the other things um so that's that's what we've been doing really been focusing on just community collabs you know like coming here coming to all the shops around doing videos and then shining light on just the different small businesses and different people that are um, a part of the community yeah that's that's what it is and i love it i love that because even at the uh legends never die art show i was um there with uh you know there was a another performer there and I was like, I'm like, oh man, like they're a performer. You guys are performers. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm like, hey, he's also, he d- he also does yeah. music. And you were like, oh my God, like, could you introduce us? And I was like, 
what? I was like, I like, I admire you so much for that, you know? And that's something where it's like, I know Manny's heard me say it a bunch of times, but I was like, I really love that. That he was like, can you introduce us? Like, we want to get to know him. And, you know, how do you build together? And I was just, to me, like, I was like, this is like the per- the perfect person to have at this event, mm-hmm. you know? And I wish you would have been here. We had an <laughs> event. It was called Community Over Competition. Oh, I missed it. Darn <laughs> it. Darn it. I missed it. I know. Damn. We'll We're do another one. Don't back, worry. Right? <laughs> but I was like, it just felt, you know, like such a beautiful, like, thing to experience at the time because it's like i'm sure that the music industry the fashion industry any kind of industry mm-hmm. could be very competitive yep. and so at that point you're just kind of like whoa like who can you actually like you know build with that's not going to you know at the end of the day like you know put you in a situation where you're just kind of like whoa like that was ultra shitty yeah you know and so it was really nice that you know you guys were like introduce us and i was like oh my god that's this great is so though. cool guys but that's, that's what it yeah. is for me it's like why be that stereotypical like why can't i be the one to revolutionize this thing and make it different yeah. like why does it have to be what i went through exactly it doesn't like yeah. I, it, it should be better it should be yeah. nicer it should be you know more respectful it should be exactly. just different things like that like why not yeah like there's there's no rule that says not it's, exactly. it's, it's either you either have it or you don't to do it and i know i have it that's exactly. the thing i have it so that's what i want to do is just be able to help people and yeah. show them that it's possible just like the people that showed me hey look it here's this keyboard here's this program here's this guitar here's this you know all check out that school like yeah. those little sparks though is all it takes and yeah. a lot of times we miss that for the for the youth you know exactly. they don't realize that there's so many things that we could do and help with but again every person has their true calling true if you don't see it or if you're never it's never put in front of your face you're never going to even know what it is exactly so like just i don't know being coming in contact with a lot of people i'm an instructor as well yeah so throughout this process i've been able to give back and teach and everything that's and awesome i have all these little proteges and just different people that i've helped along the way but for me it's like they're getting from me something they can never get and i'm not going in there it's not because of the money it's not because of none of that it's yeah. because of the fact that i can help them to grow and they want the help like if you want the help and you're going to get it, but how bad do you want it though? I That's feel the thing. You. Like if, if you just, okay, I'll, I'll watch this I one thing you. or I'll take a little bit of advice. Yeah. No, if you're willing to be broke to get the help or to do this or to find the help or travel to San Diego to get the help or these different things, yeah. that's how you're going to succeed. Oh yeah, you're going sure. above and beyond of oh, what yeah. anybody would do, you know, oh, yeah. for your own dream. Because it's your own dream regardless of exactly. it. Exactly. You know? And it's like, I love that you're just, that you're not gatekeeping any of those things, you know, which is like so beautiful because it's like, there is a lot of that stuff, right? Where you're like, you have to do all these things. And then it's like, how do I get there? And you're like, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> and you're just like, no. And it's like, it's awesome to be able to like have someone where it's like, hey, if you really want to put in the time, right? Because it's like, we've all put in that time of like, time where you're just kind of like trial and error but also like people basically being like meet this person meet this person you know and so there is for me like i i feel you on that too where it's like i have every sewing thing that you could imagine (laughs) in here right (laughs) and it's like i could tell you how to create the coolest thing but it's like you have to show me that you're dedicated because it's like i've been dedicated Mm -hmm. i made so many sacrifices i've missed out on so many like things you know but it's like you showing up for an hour mm-hmm. is not going to do anything no. to prove to me that you're dedicated to something. Nope. You know, it's like really like putting in that work where you're like, I want this super bad, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, you're an example of like someone that, c- that can actually do that, you know? So it's like, how, how can we support you? Because I know you just released you 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 yes. really you just released an album. Yes, I did. I yeah. released my first official uh, collab album, Keys to the City Volume One. Nice. Uh, with my artist Jarez. Yeah. Um, 3D, low verses, B Rail, Dom, and then my boy Johnny Walsh. You guys yeah, already know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a great Where project. Can we listen? listen on Spotify, all across the board. Just search at BZ Beats or any one of those artists. You'll cool. be able to find it. This is just the beginning, though. Um, I got yeah. a huge catalog ready to drop. But again, we're doing it the right way. And we're, we've been building our team. 
Um, shout out to everybody that's been involved, uh, Monarch Gallery, shout out to uh, 24-7 Creative, Pioneer Films, all that. Yeah. Vida, you guys, they yeah. already know. Um, everybody's know. just been so supportive out here and it's just been amazing that's to awesome. see that. Like coming from a place where there was no support and it was just me doing it. Now coming over here and it's like, wow, this community is amazing. But I want to yeah. continue to build off of that. Because why can't the whole city be amazing? Why does exactly. it just have to be this little community? No, it's the whole, 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 like, city, you know? And it's, like, we really want everyone to, like, go and <laughs> listen to your album. Yes, and, like, please. really please just do. blow it up. Yep. Like, tell your friends. Tell everybody. Seriously, tell your friends. Tell your mom. Tell your grandma. Have your dog listen. Have your cat listen. Yep. Everyone listen to this album. Yep. It would be really fun. We also to, have uh, you know. visuals too for all of them. So Ooh, check it out on YouTube as well. Yes. After you're done watching the podcast, go yeah. ahead and uh, search up BZ Beats and you can go ahead and check out all our music videos and all that. And uh, yeah, we're just really trying to do it the right way awesome. and, and bring this uh, LA vibe that is not good a lot of times yeah. to over here with the sound and the production and the yes. quality and just really be at that high level on our own. Exactly. Exactly. Do you, where could people find you? Um, all across the board at yeah. BZ beats, social media at BZ beats, um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all that at BZ nice. beats. You look me up, you Google me, you're going to find me. You're like, I've got content for years and years. That's and years. awesome. <laughs> like you're not going to get away. You're going to find me. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, it was really nice getting Pleasure. to hang out and chat and get to know more about you. Yeah, so thank you we're again. excited. And remember you guys got to listen. You got to blow up the album. Tell everyone, you know, cause we have to support our local creatives. So, yeah, this Back. is Thank Skills Pay so Bells. Much. Yeah. Thank you so much again for having me. <laughs> Peace, guys. You're like, bitch, it's too early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good time. And that's a wrap, guys. That's yeah. a wrap. Yeah. That's Perfect. a wrap. I got amazing footage. Oh, yeah. man. So Dude, that was like. That was good. Thank you. I so didn't much. even know all of that. that was sick. <laughs>